you guys know about the the Ninth Circuit opinion that that came down um, in that in that case, the Marcus Gray, aka Flame, versus Katy Perry over Dark Horse? Yeah, you, you guys familiar with that one? Yeah, it's been a while since I covered it, but yeah, I was familiar yeah. with it when it was happening. Sure. Yeah. So the Ninth Circuit just came out with their opinion, um, agreeing with the court's uh, with the court's decision to vacate the jury verdict in that case. So for anybody that is not familiar, this was a case about two different songs, um, and it was it's a copyright case. So Bree, this is this is probably you know up your alley. You said that you do you do. Copyrights too, right? Not just, yeah, not just trademark and copyrights. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So, um, so they were comparing Dark Horse to Joyful Noise, and the the ultimate conclusion by the jury was that there was a substantial similarity of an ostinato. So, if you are not familiar with with musical terms, an ostinato is basically a repeated riff that supports the melody. You can think of it as kind of like a chord progression, and Generally speaking, now I think this is kind of controversial because of the the blurred lines decision that came out. Um, mm -hmm. I know that's that's like a lot of people are are still up in arms about that one. Um, generally speaking, something like a chord progression is too commonplace to be considered um, to be considered copyrightable or, or or protectable under copyright laws. Um, so here in this case, when this went up to the Ninth Circuit. Um, after, so sorry, the jury, the jury came back. They said, yes, they're substantially similar. Katy Perry, you have infringed the trademark of Marcus Gray. Um, then the judge said, actually, no, you haven't. I'm vacating the verdict. And then it went up to the ninth circuit. So I'll read just really quick the summary from the ninth circuit. And then we can kind of, kind of talk about it. Um, the, the panel affirmed the district court's order vacating a jury's award of damages for copyright infringement and granting judgment as a matter of law to Catherine Hudson uh, also are professionally known as Katy Perry and other defendants. Christian hip hop artists Marcus Gray, a P uh, professionally known as Flame, Emmanuel Lambert, and Chike Ojukwu claimed that an ostinato or repeating instrumental figure in Hudson's song Dark, Dark Horse copied a similar ostinato in plaintiff's song Joyful Noise. The plaintiff held that copyright law protects musical works only to the extent that they are original works of authorship. The panel concluded that the ostinatos at issue here consisted entirely of commonplace musical elements, and the similarities between them did not arise out of an original combination of these elements. Consequently, the jury's verdict finding defendants liable for copyright infringement was unsupported by the evidence because plaintiffs failed to put forward legally sufficient evidence that joyful noise and Dark Horse were extrinsically similar works with respect to any musical features protectable under copyright law. That's the summary. Mm -hmm. So, sounds pretty good, right? <laughs> sounds good to me, to be quite honest. It seems mm -hmm. like the right decision. Uh, it's it's a nice little uh, change for a nice circuit sometimes because sometimes they, the, the, the Marvin Gaye one, whereas like in Robin Thicke, it's like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so this is much more. They were, they were they, the, the, the ninth circuit was blurring some lines there, right? Yes, they were. <laughs> Very nice. Very but, um, good. <laughs> so, bonus point to legal bites. Uh, yes, but this is much more in line with the right law and more in line and adam neely's done some great work on the musical analysis oh, as well yes um, i don't necessarily agree with him on the legal interpretations but his musical interpretations are you know way better way smarter than mine so uh <laughs> we'll give credit where credit's due yeah but yeah the, the 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 to be able to have a copyright you need to have you know this original work of expression and to and to my mind there's something analogous or at least comparable in like the idea of dance moves as well where you when you talk about works of choreography because this gets back to like the the flossing dance and some other things that were a, a thing for a hot moment in copyright law so you have these like little excerpts that by themselves are not really copyrightable the the composition is copyrightable but these little elements by themselves are not um and so you can see that in other aspects of copyright law where you're talking about uh, scenes of fair, for example, in particular kinds of work. So if I'm going to make a fantasy work, if I'm going to make a high fantasy work, for example, mm -hmm. it's going to have particular tropes, particular beats that are going to be very predictable, you know, particular uh, scenes that are very sort of familiar and reminiscent uh, th to the point of being cliche or, or tropish, but they're to be expected. And so to in, in music as well, like you have these elements of music, like, you know, triads or you have... Um, 
you know, different shifts of different chord progressions that are sort mm -hmm. of well known in Western music that have been the, you know, the last couple hundred years worth of development. So to take these individualized elements and see, well, I have this, this in common, and therefore this copyright infringement, I think is something the court should be more skeptical at. I, I think so that this analysis is more on point. To say that there's some familiarity or some commonalities, even, I, I think that um, is is not sufficient. You need to you need to show a bit more than an overall familiarity. And I definitely don't think that admitting that someone was your inspiration should be the basis of a copyright infringement because it just it just encourages people to be like music. What's music? I've never heard of music. There are other artists. <laughs> And I don't think that that's where, where we want to be either. Yeah, which, which is why, um, which is why, uh, you know, I said this last week because we were talking about the Dua Lipa um, mm -hmm. lawsuit that, that she's mm -hmm. got, she's got a couple of complaints filed against her um, that uh, she, um, well, anyhow, uh, that, uh, um, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought because I was, I was pulling up an Adam Neely video. Um, sorry guys, that's really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> what were you just saying? We need, we need a collab with Adam Neely. That's what we need. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so. Um, he, he's he's got he's got some really good breakdowns so that people can understand these musical terms and the ways in which um, you know music really does copy itself. You know. Yeah. Oh, and what I was going to say is that you know Prince used to say that he didn't listen to anybody's music but his own, and he was eccentric enough that it's That's believable. Possible. Yeah, it's muscle. definitely. Yeah. But um but most people like to if if every single musician out there was like no, I only I only listen to my work. Like that's just ridiculous. You know, and and even and even if you did, there's always a possibility that you could accidentally uh you know, just from something from your childhood. You know, you have some chord progression in your head from from hearing something on the radio 20 years ago that that could come up and and could subconsciously enter a song that you're creating yeah or or, yeah. or, or you know my working plan to sue all of law tube this is just by <laughs> this is just me framing framing all of law tube this, you've all been exposed to me and my work at uh, boss attorney brie admitted how she watches my work and, and knows my work so any similarities at all must be <laughs> copyright infringement Suing the of copyright course. lawyer for the copyright infringement is always a fun, <laughs> fun way to meet friends and influence people. I'll tell you. <laughs> what, Bree, so what, crap, what are your man. what are your what are your thoughts on on this this whole thing? Yeah, um, I'm not too familiar with the two songs, honestly, so I can't really make any determinations in my own opinion. But yeah. I do agree with the court as far as it being something so small that's being copied, and I'm seeing a lot of cases come up like that right now. I don't know um, if you guys are familiar with the Drake and Chris Brown's No Guidance song. They're being sued by a man on YouTube that made a song called Like I Love Your Dress. Um, and hmm. they're specifically um, focusing on words that is the you got it, girl, you got it. That's what they say in the Chris Brown song. And then he says hmm. something about you got it and something about your dress, right? And then Chris Brown and Drake's attorney comes with all of these other songs that uses that same phrase, you got it. Um, and I think that's similar with the um, what's going on in the Katy Perry case, just based off of the summary that you read. It's like, it's something so small, but the rest of the song is like completely different. And when I listen to those two, the Chris Brown and Drake song against the YouTube guy song, they sound completely different to me, but um, maybe it's because I'm not a music genius or anything like that, but he really believes the song sounds exactly the same and those words are what's important. And I think that's mm -hmm. what happened with Katy Perry, that little, the little music part of it, they they thought it sounds so similar and not necessarily under the court of law. Yeah, and this is something that Adam Neely points out really well. I'm actually gonna share my screen because I, I found- um, Let's rip off the Adam Neely, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. And yeah, I will play make, part of it. I mean, it's fair use and commentary. Uh, We're doing some yeah. legal analysis on the back end of it. It's all good. <laughs> I will link to his video in the description so that people can go and check out the whole thing because it is so worth um checking out the whole thing he it's it's a it's i mean his his videos are really great um on the subject um okay let's see i think this might be the right also on a personal um, level i think dark horse is a banger of a song it's a great song it is a great song and i, I really... think i think at least in my mind is capable of a 
of a, a deeper interpretation. I, I think maybe I'm over reading the song, but I actually think it's kind of a deep song. Yeah, it's it's been a while since I've thought about the lyrics, but um, yeah. it's it's good. It's it's really good. Yeah, no, I'm 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 a, I'm a big fan of this one too. I'm not always a huge fan of Katy Perry, um, but I like this one. Anyhow, okay, let's see. I think this might be the right point where he kind of points out something very important about the commonality of this riff or the same chord progression or bass line or drum groove, but they do share a similar synth ostinato or a repeated melodic fragment that helps support the main melody. We only hear this ostinato in the verses for Dark Horse, but we hear it throughout A Joyful Noise. It's a descending phrase in staccato quarter notes that starts on the median in the key of A minor, the third degree of the scale, and descends down to the tonic. It sounds like this. <laughs> Dark Horse's ostinato sounds suspiciously similar. It's in the key of B flat minor, but it's been transposed here to the key of A minor. Wait, 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 I'm sorry about that. That's actually not the Katy Perry. <laughs> That's the Adagio from Bach's Violin Sonata in F minor. This is Katy Perry's Dark Horse. Wait, sorry. Got confused again. That's the traditional <laughs> Christmas carol, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. This is the Katy Perry. Actually, I'm sorry. I keep getting confused. That's the spiritual Go Down Moses. This is the Katy Perry. Wait a second. I'm so sorry. That's actually Akira Ikafube's theme to 1954's Godzilla. Yeah. This is actually Katy Perry's Dark Horse. <laughs> So the question is, is this similar enough to Joyful Noise to legally be the same piece of music? The jury seems to have ruled that that is the case. Juries are dumb. People are dumb. <laughs> Juries suck. <laughs> so this is, and, one, of and in this the is video... one of the reasons that I cover mostly appellate cases. Because <laughs> facts, I don't like facts. Facts are dumb. I don't like, I don't, trial work is dumb. <laughs> uh, trial, trial attorneys are dumb because you have to deal with the facts and figure out what facts are. I don't like facts. Just tell me what the facts are. I'll tell you what the law is. Spinning spin out some law truth I, over here, so, court of appeal style. <laughs> whatever. I, I love, I love juries. I love juries. Mm -hmm. I, I even, even though it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a jury trial is scary because you never know exactly what they're thinking and they can totally be thinking something different from what you're thinking. Um, yeah, but you know, at the same it's probably time, why the last time I went to a jury and I said, uh, members of the jury, you're all a bunch of idiots, but that's okay. I'm your better. And I'm here to tell you the truth. And if you listen to me, we'll get through this together. Probably didn't work out that well for me. <laughs> I, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I like, I like juries because I, I like the, the, psychological aspect of of you know giving information to people and and hopefully they can retain it in the way that you are giving it and i don't know maybe maybe that also it comes with with just being a youtuber like i hope that i'm the the way that i'm conveying my information and my thoughts is <laughs> is uh is is uh done so in a way that people find somewhat appealing or interesting or helpful um but anyhow um i i Appellate work would be interesting too, though. But I, I do like, I do like juries. But I think that this just this this points to a really good um, uh, note here is that the 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 ostinato really can't be relied on for for something that is copyrightable because it's so mm -hmm. easy to make common, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, it's um, Adam Neely is great, and he he does a great job of of illustrating that. And in this particular video, he also goes into how basically the jury ended up relying almost entirely, or maybe exclusively, on the uh, on the the plaintiff's expert witness. And he basically had this whole theory about the ostinato, and he said that there's really nothing else out there that's similar to these two songs using it. And so, of course, it had to be substantially similar, but. Adam Neely's like, well, I just gave a bunch of examples <laughs> of, right. of things that have been all the way back to Bach for crying out mm -hmm. loud, where he's he's making music for the Catholic Church. You know, like this is this has been around for a long time. So how can you possibly say that that's that's preposterous? So, anyhow, so I wonder Bach if um, Katy Perry's attorneys didn't introduce those songs to show that it is, you know, similar or it's common. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, he. Actually, you know what? I think I feel like Adam Neely would be a good um, expert witness mm -hmm. at trial 
That would be interesting if he started getting expert witness witness work, because I think, you know, in, in this particular case, it looks like, you know, Katy Perry's attorneys don't need to use, you know, any kind of evidence or any kind of arguments um, unless Marcus Gray decided to try to appeal it further. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it seems like they would be able to introduce the use of the, the similar kind of motif in other in other works right to show right. to the jury like no this is this is what they're what they're saying is is looney tunes <laughs> and mm -hmm. this is everywhere so how could it possibly be copyrightable